500 milligrams once daily versus a matching placebo. Um, we did this trial because we did a promising random, uh, phase two study which we published in the Journal of Clinical Cancer Research in 2007 and also other investigators did phase two trials with the similar drugs and found responses in all of these trials. There comes a point where phase two trials really aren't informing any other than telling you there's a hypothesis that needs testing by the only scientific test which can ever prove a treatment works in cancer, which is a phase three randomized trial. The trial we ran was funded by the Cancer Research UK and run through the OCTO trials unit in Oxford. We plan to recruit over 18 months 450 patients, it took us 29 months and you'll see that in the full presentation which I'm due to give shortly in Hall D after this presentation. We powered the trial to detect a one year survival from 10 to 18 percent. It was a multi-centre trial and involved 51 centres in the United Kingdom. Um, this is the progression-free survival from the randomized patients. As you can see, the orange curve with gefitinib lies above the control placebo curve, and there was a, a significant progression-free survival benefit, albeit small. As you'll note from the shape of the survival curve, as in many signal transduction inhibitor studies, there's a significant group of patients with very little benefit, and they fall off very quickly in the first few months in the progression-free survival curve. And then there's a tail of patients where there may be some more benefit accruing. The, the, the hazard ratio for progression-free survival was 0.795, and this was statistically significant at the P0.17 level. As is often the case in these very hard tests, the phase three randomized trial, progression-free survival did not translate into overall survival benefit. The hazard ratio for overall survival was only 0.9, and the p-value was not significant at 0.285. Please note the very dire prognosis of these patients in the second line setting. The overall survival in the control arm was 3.6 months for all patients, which is of course extremely poor. We didn't stratify the patients by performance status in this trial because it was the first ever randomized trial in the second line setting in esophageal cancer. And we can therefore define the prognostic value of performance status, which is very extreme. If your performance status is two, your median survival is two months. If your performance status is one, it's four months. If your performance status is zero, it's six months. So we've discovered uh, this, the, this, which is very important for the design of future trials. Um, clearly, we, we need to define which patients benefit, because clearly some patients benefit a lot. This is a patient we treated in my institution, and as you can see, that had previous surgery and chemoradiotherapy. The, they, they had a, a they had a squamous cell cancer, and the yellow arrows on the panel A that you can see indicate the recurrence of tumour which was causing severe chest wall pain. Shortly after receiving gefitinib, the tumour regressed markedly, and you can see the day 21 CT scan in the middle with a very remarkable response. And improvement in palliation, which is very important in this group of patients who have a lot of symptoms. This was a very durable response, which is what we've seen in the study. The overall response rate was only 3.1%, but the responses we saw were very durable. And this patient has only recently progressed 20 months after being on study, which is a very good result for that patient. Um, thank you very much for listening. I don't have any more.